It's us. Hurrah! Yes, back once again in this particular format. We haven't done this one for a while, have we? No, 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 no. Uh, chatting rubbish. Yep, yep. Shit chat. We haven't had anything to chat about. No. But uh, exciting times, Nigel. I don't know if you're aware of this, but uh, things are changing in the world of the humble light bulb. And you know that we we do we do like a, a good lamp. Yes, yes. Bit in part to the lamping. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, anyway, uh, to get to the point. Oh, sure. From the first of October this year certain lamp technologies are going to be phased out and we're going to have a little chat today about what those technologies uh, are because okay. Nigel's not aware of this and I don't suppose many other people are. This information comes from the Lighting Industry Association, no less. Who? I don't know, but they obviously know their onions when it comes to lamp technologies. Okay. Yes, so uh, Nigel, would you like to take hold of the tray of gay because you're going to be... The the tray of happiness is that. Yeah, it, tray of, it, it, why it is, why is it called no, the tray you're, you're of gaiety? Right, right, Nigel, because there are, is a smiley face on there highlighting oh. the gaiety of the tray. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. And within said tray is an assortment of lamps. Okay. So Nigel will be demonstrating to you today. Yeah. So uh, let's begin with the first one on the list for no longer being available after 1st October 2021. And when I say no longer available, I'm talking about no longer available to go into the supply chain so anything that's already in stock in the supply chain in warehouses you will still be able to get after the 1st October 2021 okay. uh, and this is legislation that's in the UK that's in line with what's happening in Europe so despite people voting for Brexit uh, we're still doing what they're doing elsewhere and the okay. whole idea of this is to get rid of inefficient lamp technologies that have been outmoded replaced, updated, improved upon, whatever. Okay. So we shall start, and you might be surprised at some of these, Nigel, you might be surprised. We shall start with the 12 volt MR16 nope. and MR11, also known as the GU 5.3 or the GU4. Nigel, do you have a, you do have a, if you start off with the one in your right hand there, Nigel, okay. that is the one that's going, going, okay. going to be gone. Uh, Nigel, we'll just show the pin configuration the there. Now, uh, what do you think about that one, Nigel? A bit surprising, do you think, to see the end of the humble no. MR16? No, not at all. Well, maybe the connections, I think they're a bit shit, personally, yeah. but um, I'm not surprised. There are the still technology. a surprising amount of them out there, are there not? We still come across regular installations that have MR16s in halogen form. Yes. The shit, of course. Yes. Um, but it was only up until about five years ago that you could still buy it. There were installations where the likes of Screwfix were still selling those in bulk and yes. builders, being cheapskates, instead of putting in LED GU10s or something like that, would still be fitting those only as recently as about five years ago. So yeah. most of the installations we see, uh, the fittings are tarnished, or they're painted over, or they're grotty looking. They've had their day, haven't they? Or they've had their uh, they've transformer had their below. Speaking of which, I do believe you have an example of such a transformer in the okay. box there, Nigel. As Nigel says, because it's a 12 volt lamp, a transformer is required to drop it from 230 volts to 12 volts, an example of which Nigel gives here. Now you can get LED versions of these lamps, and again, yes. if you'd like to fish into the tray of gay, Nigel, you should find an example of an LED MR11. Oh, well, and an MR16, there's no MR11 in there as well. Yes, there's the in your own one. time, in your own time, yes, there we go. So the MR11 is the, uh, you don't get so many of those in that smaller form factor, they're the 3.5 centimeter diameter, diameter lamp, as opposed to the 50 millimeter diameter of the MR16. Popular in the mid to late 90s, into the 2000s, largely superseded by GU10 these days, and the yes. MR11 form factor kind of died a death completely. Both available in LED format. The trouble is, Nigel showed a transformer earlier. The transformers are made for halogen loading, aren't they, Nigel? Yes. So what's the problem with that? Well, sometimes there is no problem. Sometimes you can just plug them straight in. And they work, but, but that's a rarity. <laughs> more often than not, they either don't work or they just flicker and flash. And why is that, Nigel? 
Oh, I don't bloody know. Well, I'm not asking electrically, for God's sake. But the Transformer example you have there has a minimum loading requirement. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yes. What are we on that one? Uh, That's a 20. 20. JCT? <laughs> 20, yeah. Mm -hmm. 20 minimum loading, and then you go and stick a, what is that, 2 watt? Something like that, isn't it? So, yes, uh, usually the Transformer you put in has a minimum load requirement that your LED lamp simply isn't going to meet and that's the point isn't it that's the point of the whole thing yes uh, is that you're putting in something more efficient that doesn't need that kind of wattage so what do you do Nigel if you're still got a load of MR16 down lights in your kitchen or whatever what would be your recommendation in what sense to replace them with GU10s is what I would do. Well, if that's your recommendation, that's your recommendation. Well, is that your recommendation? That's what I'd do. I'd, Come on, man. If it was, if it was my kitchen, yes. Yes, I, I concur, Nigel. There are two options basically. You can either retrofit uh, an LED lamp, but the chances are you're going to have to replace, replace the transformer these. for an LED driver yes. for it to work properly. Otherwise, you run the risk of flickering, premature failure, uh, perhaps it not working at all. And it all depends on, as well, how accessible these transformers are to replace. Yeah. Usually, the installer will have put one transformer per lamp and the whole shebang is available to grab and grip and yeah. extract through the downlight hole. However, sometimes you come across, I remember a job, uh, yeah. were you on that one uh, years ago? There's a chimney sweeper lives around the corner. And they've got an extension, and whichever builder did it, put a transformer somewhere, and then daisy chain the 12 volts off to all the lights in there. I ain't got a clear where the transformer was. You're never going to find yeah, it unless find you start it. pulling down ceilings and knocking out. Or arms. you get the builders that put them up before the ceiling's plastered, but don't leave enough length on to get them out of the hole. Motherfuckers! They're bastards when they do that. It's, you pull it, and you just ain't got it. So mm -hmm. it's either knock holes in it or. If you can get to the 230 volt side, and sometimes as Nigel says you can't quite get that out enough, in which case we often just chop off the input yeah. cable to the transformer, as, as has happened here, and use that to drive a double insulated yeah. downlight enclosure, then you can fit a GU10, because GU10 came along and largely pulled the pants down on these form factors. So they're old. Yes. and. Uh, it may surpri be surprising to some to hear that they won't be able to source the spares for too much longer because, as I say, they're in the supply chain right now. Places will no doubt stock up. You'll find them somewhere, I'm sure, in a year or two still. Someone still will have some stock on the shelf somewhere. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's crap, isn't it? It's crap. It needs to go. It needs to be replaced. So uh, that's 1st of, of, of October this year. Yeah. Uh, that you'll start to see them disappear and already I notice on some websites I think it was on Toolstation's website it looks like a lot of them already gone end of line uh, the ones there so well, they sell so many yeah the places that are already like saying uh, no more of this no more no more right the next one on our hit list same date 1st of October 2021 this one may surprise you as well is the R7S linear halogen lamp R7S Nigel, R7S. Jesus, Come on man. Is that an R7S? Of course it's an R7S. You're an electrician for God's sake. Yeah, alright, you know all the names of shit. I'd just call that the old uh, 400 watt floodlight. Well, these come in two flavours of course. Yes. Which are? Well, you've got the <laughs> come on, come on. Well, you've got the 250 watts and the 400 watts. Oh, fuck off. Is it you've got a 118 watts? millimetre, which is what oh, right, it's clutching length. right now. Really? And you have the 78 millimetre, okay. the shorter version. As Nigel says, they come in different wattages. <laughs> However, they're not all being removed completely. Do you know which ones are going? No, you're the one who likes to lick the balls of these kind of <laughs> notifications and uh, I just let him tell me. I don't know. I, don't I should tell you something again and this is what surprises me about this one. Lamps of over 2700 lumen. Over. Over. 2700 lumen. Now the reason that surprises me is because 
Again, these were popular in down lights and wall lights from the end of the 90s into the noughties before they got superseded by more efficient technologies. The most likely place you'll find one of these is going to be in a floodlight, of course. And I would have thought that if you've got a, if you need powerful floodlighting, then you need powerful floodlighting, and yes. you're not going to find an LED retrofit equivalent anywhere near as powerful as that is. There is an LED replacement in well, that. These, if you've got enough of these, they'll keep your garden warm. Mm, they right? certainly yeah. will. And, I'm, and it feels great to touch it. It's not meant to touch on. No. But I know he's not going to stick this in anything, well, so I'm, I'm quite happy touching it. Um, there is a LED replacement, retrofit yes, replacement. Yes, I see that. that. To demonstrate and that. And these are rarely bright enough to actually replace them. Which is so. exactly my point. I would have thought that uh, lamps with an efficiency at the lower end of the scale, the kind of ones that are used in floor lamps, are used in wall lamps, would make more sense to change out yeah. to the LED equivalents because although this one here has only LEDs on one face, you can get ones from say Philips that have LEDs all round. Yeah. Uh, they t these tend to be a larger form factor, you can see that it's not yeah. anywhere near as the kind of size of not the as, old lamp. Not as so that one, that example there, will fit into a floodlight housing, for example. It won't be anywhere near as bright, but it will probably do a competent job in a yeah. lot of installations. But again, it surprises me because there isn't an LED retrofit that's super bright that's going to be an equivalent. So if you've got floodlighting that requires that amount of light, that amount of lumen output, you're kind of scuppered, really, because you're going to have to change that for a powerful integrated LED floodlight which is probably going to be a lot larger than the fitting you've got or some other technology like a discharge technology son or whatever which sounds like you're being phased out for LED so it's a bit of a funny one now I'm quite surprised about that myself I, I'd have thought like I say they'd go for ones that tend to be of a lower lumen output that you're likely to find in your sort of yeah. your, your wall lamp and they're, they're horrible things those freestanding wall lamps that use those things in there and uh, I mentioned in a previous video about the Shirley Towers fire it was one of those that caused that when someone left their curtains draped over it because these things get horrendously oh, yes. hot yes. horrendously hot most of those sort of lamps have a tilt switch so if you knock them over I've got one over there actually if you knock them over the tilt switch it knocks them knocks off. the power off yeah um, and you know if you, if you if you need that kind of safety device in your floor lamp something's going a bit wrong there really isn't it you're obviously burning the wrong kind of technology there so that's uh, linear R7S lamps, okay. over 2,700 lumens, again from 1st of October. Right, you're going to give me another technical name then, aren't you? This is an easy one. And again, you might be surprised. These are all quite surprising, really. Yeah. Self-ballasted compact fluorescent lamps. Two examples in there, Nigel. Oh, come on, man. They're right there in front of you. Well done. Nigel here has two examples, one being a B22D bayonet cap fitting, the other being an E27 Edison screw fitting. But yes, these lamps, which you know, I've done a video previously about the humble fluorescent lamp, which as we all know, because we've all watched that of course, ah, yes. was started in 1983 yeah. with the Philips SL18. The old jam jam. Mm, indeed so, indeed so. Let's put that book up on the shelf of interesting CAC. So, yes, after 1st of October, these sort of lamps, which are made to just go straight into a fitting, no tools required, in the compact fluorescent form factor, will no longer be a thing. I always found these useless in rooms that you got to move through quickly. You land in your hallway. Transient spaces. And, yes, transient, well done. Transient spaces. Stick them up, turn the light on, and they haven't even... Barely glowing by don't, the time you turn them off. Don't go the with other Jeremy Clarks, man, are you fucking what? Brexit knob. What? The older technologies, yes, the older lamps, but newer ones. If we, if we were to fire that one up now, I haven't had one of these in my house for donkeys because they were annoying us. This will be at ninety percent full brightness immediately. Oh, oh yeah, so it's uh, reaching hundred percent very quickly. They none of the ones are. The technology there, moved on and current examples of these are, are pretty good but yes early examples i should have watched one of your earlier videos oh, well, nobody asked you so why would you bother 
Yeah. Now this does not affect the PL style fluorescent lamp technologies such as your G23, G24. Oh, you're asking me to... Uh... Unbelievable. G23, G24. Well, don't show me, man. Show the camera. And your 2D, of course. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't got three hands, mate. Yeah, yeah. The PL, or you know, plug-in lamps. Got two pins, four pins. Four pin 3D there. And Other pin variants are available, yeah. as are wattages and sizes. But yes. these plug-in lamps, because the ballast is external to them, will continue to be available. There's no, nothing suggesting that they're going to be phased out anytime soon. Nor would I expect them to be. No? No. But obviously... Why are in this bucket? To sh so you can show... <laughs> do you, okay. uh, uh, you've got to think, I'm the Paul Daniels of this ar arrangement, and you're the Debbie McGee. You're the one in the, the freckly leotard. You've got bigger tits than she has, that's for sure. Shoving off the, the thing to the audience Please. while I stand here going, you're like this, not a lot, and all this kind of shit. Uh, also in there, you can see, you can it, is an LED lamp showing you what... Which LED lamp? The modern equivalent yes. would be. Well, you've all seen one of them. If you watch it, you've seen one of them. And of course, there are fewer components in a modern LED lamp. There are fewer dangerous chemically things. Maybe I won't be fingering that one again. Uh -huh. No mercury, for example. Um, simple construction, arguably. Uh, they supposedly last much longer, require less frequent replacement, although these things, again, the, the modern technology on these is pretty good, they will last a good long time. Also on the about to die list for October uh, is any LED lighting that's uh, considered in in inefficient. Oh, inefficient. Yes, yes, no, you're right with that one, you're right with that one. This is an example of an early LED light, an example we've shown before, actually. This, similar, not quite the same to what I have in my house. It's early, but it lasts forever. Well, it depends. I'm not convinced, man. I'm trying to see what wattage it is. I can't see without my glasses on because I'm a blind bastard these days. You want me to look? Oh, man. <laughs> You haven't got your glasses on either. No, I see better without my glasses close up. That mm -hmm. is... I was always told, that's a six watt. I always told frenzied masturbation would make you blind. and It's true. I, I'm, I'm okay close up. That couldn't reach it. Right, right, right. There you go, six watt. Now, I, I don't know what the cutoff is for this... Um, for this thing about... inefficient LEDs. So that's just an example of a, a lamp that perhaps wouldn't meet today's targets, nor would you really expect it to because it's not an no. old one, it's an early one. Six watts, I don't know what lumen output it is, but these days you would be able to get something half that wattage with a better lumen output than that thing provides, I suspect. Mm. So there you go. Okay, so, next. so those are the ones going this year. Right. Again, I'm not saying they're not going to be available from 1st of October, but there'll be no new ones supposedly going into the supply chains. So okay. places will have stock until they've exhausted stock. And of course, we've seen this happen before. We've seen it happen with the old uh, tungsten lamps. So Nigel, I believe you've got a 150 watt tungsten in there. Oh. So I'm trying to sort things out ready for when I'm next going to jump on you. you I'm break. looking at what's left there. So that's a 150 watt tungsten lamp. They got phased out some time ago. Yes, 150 watts. Also the T12, Nigel, if you'd like to fetch the T12. Oh, T12, Nigel, T12. T12. <laughs> Sounds like a Terminator. What the fuck are you looking in there for, for a T12? That's behind us here. <laughs> oh, that's a T12, I should have known that. Okay. <laughs> I know I don't want that. <laughs> he asked me to look in the bucket. I didn't say look in there, I said fetch the T12. Yes. And that's named because... Good. <laughs> Aha! These are 12 millimetres apart. 12 millimetres? That's 12 mm. millimetres. Fuck off, are they? Put your tape out. 
Anyway. <laughs> the T12, the fat fluorescent, that got done away with some time ago. So this is nothing new, this culling of technology. And you yeah. know what? If you look hard enough, maybe you can still find some around. Find some in my garage. Yeah. They need replacing. And that's the point, isn't it? Anything that's still using this old technology is itself old, probably out of date. But we'll come on to what you can do about that in a moment. Because there's more. Oh, Not this year. We've gone through the ones that are expiring this year. But in, on the 1st of September 2023, so you've got a couple more years of these, there will be further calls. Starting with the T8. <laughs> One of these is going to get smashed before the end of this presentation. Yes, you're quite right to take both of those. Nice, quite right to take both of those. Oh, and this might surprise you a bit. Again, quite surprising because there's an awful lot of T8 fittings still out there, yes, aren't there? Yeah. Obviously, the T5 largely took over in the fluorescent format. Nige has a 1500mm T8 there, which is no doubt rated at 58 watts. It doesn't actually say on it. Oh, it does say on it. 58 watts. The equivalent T5 for that same size would be rated at 36 watts, I believe. Yeah. But what Nigel also has here is an LED tube. Are they getting rid of that? No. No. That's, that's what I was going to say. That's, uh, that's a bit drastic. So if you didn't want to replace your fluorescent battens, your fluorescent fittings, you can convert them to LED, which may just require the LED tube being fitted as is. Some of them will work just being locked into place within the fitting, you're better off doing full conversion on the baton, which is what we yeah. normally do. And the way we do that is to chop out the ballast, chop out the starter if there is one, I've got some wind, there it is, chop out the starter and chop out the ballast and take the 230 volts going into the baton and wire it directly to one of the tombstones because this, this light is only powered from one end. Yes. It's, it's basically a 240 volt light bulb. Yeah, Lion neutral says, go in. There's no, no, no ballast needed, no frequency conversion, no capacitor needed, no to combat any reactants from the choke or anything like that. It's just a straight 230 volt light bulb. Yeah. Line and neutral. So you wire bit. line and neutral to one tombstone, you label up which is the live end, and you make sure this goes in the right way around. So yeah, the live end, which is this end on this tube, yeah. goes in. The other end doesn't do shit. So yeah. when it goes into the tombstone at the other end, which you leave disconnected, it's just there for mechanical support to hold it in. Also, uh, you shouldn't put it in backwards, otherwise you end up with a stripe. Yes, yeah. yes, uh, because it's basically an LED strip within the tube. Yeah. And if you put it upside down, then you get to see the the back of the strip. Yeah, so I'm just trying to look at the rating of that. Can you see it? Uh, uh, the box is over there. Do, 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 do. Oh, I didn't know that. It's a G13 fitting. G13, uh, 4000 K, 180 to 265 volts, 300 degree beam, no mercury. Come on, come on, give me a bloody. Okay. Let's pull the box in, shall we? Because we just look like we're staring off camera like a couple of. You should speed walls. that bit up. This is a fusion tube from CEF. Never seen a fusion lamp fail. Not that we fit hundreds of them or anything, but no. there you go. Oh, come on, there's got to be a wattage on there. Instant full light. Yes, these are 23 watts. It's at the bottom. Oh, yeah. These are, uh, uh, the LED versions are flicker free, of course. But uh, obviously, well, I was going to say you've got to buy quality, but we'll come back to quality. That's yes. more to be said than quality. Okay. Are we back to the. Uh, that's the, when I say the T8s are being phased out, we're talking 600 millimeters. Uh, 1500 millimeters and 1200 millimeters. Yes, 6, 12, 15. So that's basically. Of course, 1800's already gone, hasn't it? I think. I haven't it seen has. an 1800 in a long while. Mm, yes, I believe it. I believe the 1800 went a while ago. So there you go. Awful lot of T8 still out there in offices and stuff. So yeah. offices, time to start updating your lighting, and it makes yeah. sense to do so because of energy saving, of maintenance saving. We'll come on to that. I shouldn't be talking about that right now. We'll come on to that. Next. I'm trying to think what is next. Is this going to be in the bucket of gay? Well, you tell me, Nigel. It's the tray of gay. Tray of gay, right. right sorry. Okay. The tray of gay. Halogen. Halogen. G. Four. Hmm. 
four mm. millimetres apart. Oh, am I a bit in the There we go, see? These damnable little capsule lamps, which were... See the bloody thing. It's all right, I'll, I'll stick an overlay picture on before mm. the end. These were arguably always oh, horrible. a shit idea. Yes. Largely used in under cabinet kitchen lighting. Yep. Uh, and in some feature ceiling lights. Very yes. low life expectancy. 1,000 to 2,000 hours. If they were in your ceiling lights, then... That's the same as one of them. Life expectancy. Oh, right, they're about a thousand. thousand. Right. That sounds like a little output So, uh, yes, if you've got a ceiling light, a feature ceiling light that uses these, then you're probably already sick of changing the lamps in the thing. Uh, the You can get, and Nigel's already grabbed it, what? you can I, get I LED it equivalents. Yes. However, as before, because they're 12 volts, the chances are the transformer or the driver, for want of a better word, that's driving the old halogen ones, won't play nicely with the LEDs. Wow, it's nice and squeezy. Yeah, it's got a squeezy. That's, squeezy that's squeezy. lovely to feel, isn't it? You'll also notice there's quite a size difference between there the two is, form yes. factors, which may preclude the newer lamp, the LED version, from fitting in the older one. In fact, there's an yeah, even bigger one in there made by Philips. You yes. See that? I've fitted these myself and yeah if, like for the under cabinets you just yeah you either end up ramming them in or you just can't get them in at all so you may find that uh there's two problems with this first of all most of these led ones aren't dimmable there may be some but the the bigger ones or the, the dimmable ones tend to come in bigger packages to accommodate yeah. more electronics so as well as talking about upgrading the lamps you probably got to upgrade your drivers again chances are if you've got these in a kitchen under cabinet installation they probably look shit every time i see those stupid triangle lights under people's kitchen cabinets that use these halogen yeah, lamps yeah. they've been in for a long time they're spattered with shite they look beaten up the heat from the lamps damaged them it's time for them to go get rid get shot you can put in an led strip or something like that these days arguably you'd have been better off with a fluorescent lamp and your bloody kitchen cabinets in the first yeah. place anyway instead of these horrible horrible things if you've got these in a ceiling light then the ceiling light, if you really want to retain it, if it really floats your boat, would have to be converted to make sure that the transformer was replaced with an LED driver. Uh, and that, if dimmer compatibility was required, then that was factored in. I'm just going to check, uh, I'm paranoid that this is going to not record our audio or stop recording or do something. <laughs> We've been caught out doing this before. We did a, one of these formats a while ago, didn't we? And then yes. found at the end that the video camera just stopped part way through. Yeah. It gave up on us. We were fucked. After I'd already bugged up. <laughs> it turned off. <laughs> and it had gone by that point. It's like, oh, well, we just won't bother with that one. Okay. Uh, next on the call list. And again, it's still, we're still talking about 1st September 2023 here, is the Halogen G9. So Another named one. because... Oh, the pins are probably nine millimetres apart. Yes, so. yes, yes. I'm sure I knew yes, that. I'm sure I told you that. Get up. Okay. <laughs> he makes that. He knows all this shit. And I have to pretend I know nothing. You say. Again, a horrible, horrible thing. Yes. Well, it's just the big brother of the G4, really, isn't it? It is, and it largely took over from the G4 for a lot of applications where the G4 is being used, especially in ceiling lighting. The G9 took over because the G9 runs directly off 230 volts, no driver required. Uh, it is a better fitting, that bi-pin yes. piece of shit G4. The pins, the, the pin mechanism used to break down a lot. Although there. these can be a pain in the ass. Sometimes you have to tweak where these pins are to get it to go in. Often the ceiling light manufacturers who use these are themselves wankers. Yeah. We were complaining on Instagram last week about dar lighting, weren't we? We're not, we, we don't like dar lighting. Yeah. They're a local company too. But their lights all seem to assume that you've got a two core flex coming out of your wall or ceiling. Nobody's got a two core fucking flex coming out of their wall or ceiling. Well, unless it's a new place. And even then, not all of them. No, two core flex. Oh, two core flex, sorry. No, it's always a twin and earth, isn't it? Yeah. Probably more than one. And yet they make these lights that expect a two core flex. I had a job last Friday, a woman with limited mobility, her living room's in the dark because she's got two of these fucking G9 fittings, each with three lamps. They've all gone, of course. And to yep. change the lamp, 
you've got to obviously get up on a step and use an allen key to remove two bolts on each one just to, to extract the, the shade lamp. to change the lamp ridiculous these things have a, again a, a pathetic lifespan and the lighting manufacturer just thinks well this looks pretty and it kind of i've, I've figured out a way to bolt it all together they're not the fuckers having to climb up and change the bloody lamps every couple of thousand yeah, years exactly. they're burnt out so yeah horrible things best i've got rid is there a, and it should be an example of a there LED is, replacement in there, Nigel? Quite, and a once handsome, again, quite a handsome beast, I'll give it that. Yes, yes, that's an integral, I believe. Yeah. Once again, often in a larger form factor. I think you can get those dimmable more easily than the G4s. Yes. But again, the form factor may preclude it from fitting in certain fittings. Yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> Still. Yeah, it's the, the, I don't like G9s in general, the way they fit. Nobody likes G9s. Good riddance. And they're usually G9s. ceramic, bloody things you got to push them into. You know. Here's something we were talking about earlier. Uh, Kip Hakes last week put on his channel about his mystery box. Mm -hmm. mm. We all like a bit of mystery box. And um, I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> In, in his flat, he's got uh, a box on the wall for an octopus wiring system. Yes. And you were talking about this earlier, oh, by coincidence in the van, yes. which is why I bring it up today. Um, these days, the modern equivalent is called a shore wire, and it allows for all your junctioning to take place in one box instead of it being sort of loop in, loop yes. out. So when we're talking about things like the DAR lights that don't like or aren't made to accommodate lots of wires yes. coming in for a, a loop in loop out method at the ceiling uh, in his flat uh, i think this is because it's got concrete it's a small flat with, i presume a small flat with concrete uh, ceilings where you can't really accommodate any junctioning unless the builder put in some kind of enclosure to take it then the shore wire the octopus as his older one is called allows all your cables for your lighting accessories to go back to one point a central point yeah either so there's a feed in and then a feed going out to each light through a switch to the light or so that the switches and the lights all come back to one point yes. it means a lot more wiring but it, it means that more cable everything's accessible in one place but and you've only got one cable yeah. per point yeah i was saying and it, and it was a coincidence i a fantastic I coincidence saw, i saw a a oh, new Wago box, new to me. Oh, the wiring yeah, system. I suppliers. believe you fix have done a video on that. I'm, I'm and, uh, it. it was just a box and they've got lots of Wagos in there. And I mentioned that uh, a long while ago, um, I wired a small one bedroom place uh, using a similar box. And I couldn't remember the name of it, I still can't. It might be one of these octopuses. Sure, why? Sh sure why or, or as it was then but i remember i paid a fair bit for it but i thought i'd try it it seemed like a neat solution and this had it all already junctioned inside really and you just switch yeah feed you know light and you plugged it in ran your wires to the appropriate point and all your junctioning was there in one place so as long as someone knew that junction was there they could open up they could check the junction and know that every other cable there, at least in the lighting, was just run to its particular point. I'm surprised that you tried that because I'd have thought you were too much of a prick to try something new. <sighs> yes, yes. I, I think yeah. it, it sounds like a great solution for something like a smallish place yes, where does. you've got, say, concrete ceilings. I, I don't think. I mean, we're starting to rewire tomorrow, I don't think it's the right kind of solution. No, I never used it again, not because I didn't like it, but because I didn't think it was appropriate for any of the places that I did. But it was a neat solution. I'll tell you what, I'll put a link in the description to Kip's video, but also to, I think, sure why I've got a video on YouTube showing there, where, so you can take a look at that. No experience it might, of it myself, but it does look like an interesting solution. If we were had to have to rewire a concreted flat or yeah and we've um, done concreted I'd, I'd, I'd flats before consider that, that, that been be awkward quite a neat solution um now why the lava lamp because although we're talking about these lamp technologies disappearing these are for room lighting so for example if you'd like to fish out that mr16 lamp again nigel which one the halogen one 
yes, the 20, 35, 50 watt halogen MR16 at 12 volts is disappearing. Not something like the 20 volt MR16 150 watt lamp, because you can get these in 20, 20 watt, so 150 watt, 20 volt flavour oh. for projectors. Oh. Similarly, the old R39 lamp burning away in the lava Amazing. lamp here. I bought an entire box of those because I thought, well, they're going to be going some point soon. So yeah. I bought a whole box it's of them. It's not like Math Moss is suddenly going to disappear because the EU say, well, you can't sell those lamps anymore. They're selling those lamps for a particular purpose. And it's the same with things like projectors. Yes, your projector may use a horrendous amount of electricity yeah. on today's, comparative with today's standards, to run. Maybe it's using one of those at 20 volts, 150 watts. But while it's still a product that people need, people use, people want, you will still be able to get those sort yeah. of lamps. So we are talking about these very specific lamps here for room lighting because there are uh, better methods today for lighting rooms. There are. So I needn't have bought my box full of... Doesn't hurt to hold stock, does it? It's a bit cloudy no. that one, isn't it? It's not, it's a, not a proper math doing to it. You don't want to know. Mm -hmm. Is that everything in our tray of day? Yeah, we we did it all. everything. Oh, let's get rid of that then. That's going to get knocked on the floor before you know it, and uh, that's, that's, that's all I needed from your presentation skills there, Nigel, in terms of showing what was in the tray of game. Well, oh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll have a seat. Oh, well, why not? Why not? I have put a comfy chair in the corner there now. So. Oh, I rest the old knees. Mm, are you still using yeah, 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 yeah. I'm kind of blue, but. I'll have yeah. to move my, my logo to the opposite side of the screen, up there somewhere, I think. Anyway, what is your logo usually here? Yes, you, 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 I usually go for a bottom right configuration. What configuration do you prefer? Um, I don't care. What a cock. A couple more things to say then. We touched on dimmer compatibility. A lot of the LED lamps are either not dimmer compatible out of the box or may require a change of dimmer. So if you are changing lighting in a room, from one of these technologies to LED, you may find you need to change your dimmer switch as well. And that's again, like the transformers, the dimmer often requires a... Um, something that can take the lower load. Yeah, yeah. So most dimmers are rated at, at least like 60 watts or something. And, and they're, rate, they're made for a halogen or a um, incandescent lamp to be on the end of them. You stick the electronics in an LED lamp and they just don't often work. You get... Yeah intermediate dimming or flickering, flickering or buzzing or I lived with a flickering one for ages it was fine full up turn it down a bit it flickers you in the end nugget synchronize your blinking out. to it haven't you and then it <laughs> yeah. looks all right there. <laughs> um, I would also say don't bother hoarding if you're one of these like Nigel people who don't like change <laughs> Uh, there were, when the old 100 watt lamps went out, there was all sorts of stories about people hoarding replacement 100 watt lamps. What's the point? We've met people, haven't we, that have got bags full of 100 watt lamps when we've been to there. If you really want to give away your money to your energy provider, that's up to you. But if you take, and by the way, this is all in an article on my website, so uh, you don't need to listen to us, you can just read that and it'll take you half the time. Not even that. But if you were to take, I've got a worked example on there, six 35 watts. MR16 lights in a room, lighting up a room. Uh, I think I worked it out to about 35 quid a year it would cost you to run them based on three hours of usage per day. And that's just one room. And that's just one room, and that's excluding having to constantly change the frigging light bulbs that only last a couple of thousand hours, in which case if you factor that in, you're adding another 25 quid to it. You may as well just buy the LEDs, save you money. If you were to put in a 3 watt LED equivalent, and also that doesn't take into account the losses in the transformer. If you were putting a 3 watt LED equivalent, your running costs per annum are down to 99p. I mean, you know, it's just you couldn't get that kind of return from your bank, yeah, could you? It's diff just, just yeah. money. It's a hell of a difference, isn't it? Hell of a difference. I should just realise I can have a beer. Because I'm not doing anything else today. I'm driving. So. I've got a non-alcoholic one if you want. No, thank you. That's not beer. That's vomit in a kettle. Oh, oh, I tell you what, that hits the fucking spot. I know it's only a Foster's, but in a hot room like this, and it is a bit toasty in here, 29.3. My sister lives in Seattle, and apparently it's over 40 Celsius there today. Can you imagine that? 
Celsius. Mind you, I bet she's got air coming, hasn't she? I don't know that she has Seattle. No. I don't know that it, it. I think that's a bit of a. So she's uh, just lying there naked uh, and sweating. I, I don't want to think about that. But <laughs> I, I, I think they have a fairly similar climate to ours most of the time. I don't think it's normally that far different. I've been there in like August, September, and it's been like a a summer's day here. You know, hot enough. But Jesus, forty-one. She said she's going to spend the day in the basement. Yeah, I'd open the windows and strip down. I don't want to think about that either. Someone might. <laughs> uh, one other thing to say, I suppose, is to buy quality. Yes. Which we always say with LED lamps. The trouble with the LED lamps is the early lamps, there are a lot of premature failures. Don't buy from Amazon and eBay, for God's sake. Buy from, we used to say don't buy from supermarket, don't buy supermarket brands. These days, I think yeah. supermarket brands are probably all right. Some, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I think, yeah. Even yeah. LAP at Screwfix, which normally we like to wave the shitty stick at. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people it's on Twitter. Shiver, anyway. A lot of people on Twitter saying they're all right now. Yeah. And to yeah. be honest, we have fitted some of late. Uh, and not having problems like the five years ago is a different story. Noticeable flicker on the lamps, lots and lots of failures. But these days, I think you know a lot of these places have beefed up their manufacturing, made them more robust. They know that their name's on the side of it, and they can't be asked dealing with all these returns. A lot of LED manufacturers supply an ex extended warranty, so if you're buying something that says two years to five years warranty, keep the receipt and do take them back if they go for a bollock. And you know, the trouble is, we used to say go for big brands like Philips, but Philips have let us down with so many failures. In fact, I've got loads of them sitting on my desk here because I keep moving through yeah, a few of yeah. things. But yeah, Philips uh, causes all sorts of trouble, and they only put a 12 month warranty on their stuff, which tells you everything, really, doesn't it? If they can't be, if they think, mm, you know, 12 months, well, hopefully most of them will last 13 onwards. Yeah. Is that what you've got to say about it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't care. I don't care. I, I, no, I do gonna... like the glass that they use. I prefer those glass than the plastic. Yeah, well... But that's you, just... You it's wouldn't, got nothing to do with the technology. You wouldn't buy something that looks like that these days. I don't know if they even make something that looks like that these days. That's an early example of a MR16 lamp. And yes, it's very plasticky. It doesn't look very good, really, in the can. These days, they are concentrating a lot more on the aesthetic of what it looks like went off. It's just Philips is shit. We never used to say that. I know, it's disappointing. It's, it's depressing that we have to say that. Depressing. I and just then, noticed I look really short on that. <laughs> <laughs> Should I stand up again? If you want. You, you may stand. I will allow this. Okay. I, I just put the comfy chair there because I know you're old and your knees are knackered. I'm, I'm just imagining my face is behind your logo down here. Just no, no, don't worry, I, I, I won't put the logo over your eyes like it's one of those porn star letterbox things I always stick it on top of the screen. Um, one good thing to mention about this legislation, although I don't think it's going to be effective, is that the le legislation, it's hard to say when you've had a couple of sips of that, legislation is also recommending that manufacturers make their luminaires repairable. Because all too often nowadays you buy something that's got a a fixed LED element to it, it's got a driver and when it goes for a bollock you're replacing the whole damn thing. It's very hard now to buy a like a bulkhead fitting or a floodlight fitting where the lamp is replaceable, isn't it? Yeah. They're all they're all fixed. Uh, yeah. and you really take your, your chances putting them in because they might last the distance, they might not. And you know it's our name, our warranty. And when we put something on the wall and say to the customer We've done a quality job for you there, pay us please. And then six months later, the damn thing's flickering and failing. It just makes us look like twats. And to be fair, he doesn't need your help, manufacturers. Don't look like a twat. No, stop. Just... The legislation says that manufacturers should make their lights repairable, have more options for replacing failed parts as opposed to the whole thing having to be thrown out should one element of it fail. Unless they can demonstrate there's a reason why they've made it that way and I suspect most manufacturers will go well we've made it that way to secure the right IP rating yeah. that's what they'll do so nothing will change no. 
which is a shame because I would rather, if I were putting up something like a bulkhead fitting, I'd rather put in one with an E27 or B22D base so I can put in the lamp of my choosing. And should that lamp fail, you just replace it. The homeowner yeah. can replace it. Yeah. You know, if it's out of warranty, it hasn't failed after two weeks. The, the homeowner can replace it in five years when it fails. And I go, well, yes, you've, you've had your life out of it. Just stick a new lamp in and off you go, carry on. Keep calm and carry on. But they, it, it's all about selling the next product, isn't it? You know. It is, it is. I, I tell you what, I should put on the screen right now images showing all these lamps. Like I say, all this is on my website. So uh, there's a link in the description. It's on the end of the free advice section. So you can go in there and you can see what's changing and what you need to perhaps start thinking about if you're still employing these old school technologies because although you may be annoyed that they are going end of life really they need to be don't they they need to be yeah yeah and that's it changes afoot in the world of lighting the key dates of course to remember there as i've already said are the first of october for your mr16s your mr11s your r7s's at least over 2700 lumen and your self ballasted compact fluorescent lamps second key date of course is the 1st of september 2023 for your g4s g9s t8s and there you go if you if you, if you are still employing these lighting technologies you have a, a bit of time to start planning your migration over to the exciting world of LED. But once again, we've imparted our knowledge to you, beloved audience. And I think that's all we've got to say for today, isn't it? Another yeah, shit chat not. comes to an end. There was something there, it didn't quite come out. Yeah. Right, well, you may as well go home, old man, because I don't think we're going to get anything else achieved today. It's not even three yeah. o'clock. You believe that? Early day. Self employment boy. Early day. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's alright for him. I'll pay him to not do anything.